The movie opens with a voice recorder playing a man's voice. The voice is narrating how he shouldn't have come to the Guanglin mansion, despite hearing all the stories. The scene shifts to a man, Jai Wu, taking pictures of an old mansion. Jai Wu is a webtoon artist and has writer's block. He wants to find new stories to inspire his new work. He's heard many stories about the place and wants to explore the rumors surrounding it. Jai Wu enters the building and heads to the caretaker's office. It is a worn-out room with many pieces of antiquated furniture. A loud thumping sound from the floor above grabs Jai Wu's attention. The sound seems like someone is walking around on the floor above. Suddenly, a faint whisper floats to Jai Wu's ears. He turns back, but sees nothing out of the ordinary. The caretaker enters the room, and Jai Wu introduces himself. He had previously called for an interview with the elderly man to hear his part of the story regarding the haunted building. He takes out his recorder, and with the caretaker person, the interview starts. The interview begins with the caretaker's introduction. He keeps his introduction short and starts questioning why a webtoon artist would come to such a place. Jai Wu is honest and shares about the rumors he has heard about the building. He wants to know if they are true. The caretaker shares that a long time ago, the building was an orphanage. One day, a horrendous fire broke out, and the adults ran away, leaving the poor and helpless kids behind. Ever since then, the rumors started to spread. Inside the building, many talked about hearing strange noises. The caretaker talks about the man who moved in on the fifth floor. He was an author and lived in room 504. When he first moved in, he said he could hear children jumping and playing. He needed a quiet place to work on his book, so he was looking for a rental. The real estate man was very enthusiastic, but the author didn't like his very friendly attitude. In the end, the author decided to rent the place. However, things were not going according to his plan. He felt frustrated, as he didn't make much progress in his writing. As the author took a drink break, he heard the noise again. His attention was diverted when he received a call from his wife. The author and his wife had a small argument due to his workload. The author decided that it would be easier for his family and himself to live separately, so that he could concentrate fully and not ignore his family. The author's wife told him about their son, who missed his father, but the author was fixated on staying in his new place till he finished his work. As the author was speaking on his phone, his notebook started to move on its own. He also heard a demonic voice, right before his wife hung up the call. Shocked at what happened, the author tried to focus on work. He noticed his notebook, which he turned off before taking the drink break. Thinking it was his misunderstanding, the author dismissed the strange happenings on his first night. He awoke the following morning with a terrible headache and went to the door next to the building. The author sought to get the correct medication from the pharmacist, who was a wonderful woman. A young man entered the store quickly and requested mold remover. The author was annoyed by this. He asked the young man to wait for his turn, but the pharmacist quickly replied, saying he should try the convenience store. The author rushed home after leaving, without accepting the change. He turned on the notebook trying to get back to his work. He noticed his notebook disappeared when he went to get a bottle of water from the refrigerator. He was flabbergasted, but as he was searching for his notebook, he could hear children giggling faintly. He followed the voice which led to a room in the apartment. Thinking it was just a hallucination, he turned to close the door to the room. He noticed a single kid's shoe lying on the floor. The author picked the shoe up and saw a name engraved on the side. Suddenly, his notebook was dropped near the door. This scared the author, and before he could do anything, he saw a childlike figure running across the hallway and out of the door. The author rushed out of the door to follow the figure, but found no one except the echo of devilish laughter. It quickly searched through the CCTV at the caretaker's office. As he played and replayed the screen, he once again found no one entering the floor, and definitely no naughty child was caught in action. Dumbfounded, the author complained to the caretaker about the noisy footsteps from the apartment below. The surprised look on the caretaker's face was alarming. According to the caretaker, the apartment below the author's place was empty. The author insisted that he heard loud bangs on his floor from below, as if someone poked the roof with a stick. The caretaker asked him to be careful and lock the doors, so that such situations won't be repeated. Frustrated, the author decided to face the people from the apartment below. He went down to room 404 and banged on the door a few times. There was no answer, and no one opened the door. The author felt extremely annoyed, so he peeked through the window. He could see a few shoes inside. The author opened the shoe rack and found one of the pairs missing a shoe. Determined that the intruder was from room 404, the author once again banged on the door, asking for the kids to bring their parents. His loud voice disturbed other residents on the floor, so he knew he couldn't continue shouting for the children to come out. The author decided to teach them a lesson. He took a blue garbage bag and filled it with the shoes in the shoe rack. He threw the shoes in the garbage disposal area while saying out loud how much he hated children. Soon, night came, and the author was forced to wake up from his sleep. His door opened on its own, making him believe the intruders were back. The author inspected each room, but didn't find anything or anyone. Even the lights were not turning on. As he turned around after checking the last room, he found the blue bag filled with the children's shoes he had thrown out earlier. Shocked to his wits, the author tried to understand what was happening. He saw a childlike figure walking inside his room, followed by a loud banging on his main door. Cautiously, he approached the door and tried to see through the peephole. He saw three children standing in front of his door in a strange posture. The light in the hallway was strangely red, and the children were pointing towards the ceiling. 
Suddenly, a face jumped right in front of the peephole, scaring the author. His legs gave up and he fell to the ground. The author realized he was lying on top of the shoes that were all over the room, scattered around. As he looked up, he found children standing upside down from the ceiling, and their faces were distorted. His room turned bright red. Jai Wu ends his interview for the day. He visits his junior, Da Hai, and finds a book from an author named Li Hai Hoon. According to Da Hai, this author was very famous for his work, but he suddenly went missing. Jai Wu later finds that Li Hai Hoon disappeared two years ago in mysterious circumstances and used to live in the building he went to. After a few days, Jai Wu returns to continue his interview with the caretaker. He asks again about the author Li Hai Hoon, but the caretaker shifts the direction of their conversation. He asks Jai Wu about his last work as a webtoon artist. Jai Wu hesitantly replies that his last work was named, Scary Horror. The saddened look on Jai Wu's face makes the caretaker curious about him. He proceeds to ask Jai Wu about his hobbies, his partner, and where he was born. Jai Wu is taken aback by the interest, and shares how he has never spoken about such a topic with a stranger before. The caretaker starts his next story, about a woman who lived on the ninth floor, in room 904. She was very beautiful, and didn't quite fit with the neighborhood. She looked like a pretty rich woman. She was the pharmacist who worked nearby. Ho Jun, a married guy, and the pharmacist were dating. She believed she was in love, but her actions soon would create a terrible result beyond her wildest dreams. The pharmacist's mother gave her a call one day. Her mother was dissatisfied, because her daughter didn't give her many phone calls. This prompted her to believe that her daughter must be dating someone. The pharmacist downplayed the issue and mentioned how busy she had recently been. She began to tidy up as she spoke to her mom. The mother of the pharmacist complained about how the husband she married had destroyed her life. Her parents split up because the pharmacist's father had a dubious reputation. The pharmacist repeated that she had no partner and preferred to keep it that way before hanging up. The pharmacist, however, was lying. For some time, she had been dating Ho Jun. When the radio abruptly began to make weird noises, the pharmacist turned to gaze at the photo frame holding their joint portrait. It quickly returned to normal, reporting the news of a husband murdering his wife, mother, that day. When the pharmacist was working in the pharmacy, she ran into the author, who had just moved into the building. Although she made an effort to assist the guy with his prescription, the author rushed out without taking his change. Her co-worker walked in out of the blue, startling her. Her co-worker requested the pharmacist to place an additional prescription for a DHD med. The pharmacist inquired about marital life from her co-worker since she was curious about it. The co-worker redirected the question to the pharmacist, asking her if she still dated a married man. The pharmacist, who had a strong romantic attachment to the man, instantly stressed that they were in love. The pharmacist received a call from Ho Jun. While the co-worker was discussing how having an affair with a married guy was an immoral thing to do. In a shaking voice, Ho Jun told the pharmacist that he would visit her that night. The call was hung up, and the pharmacist worried about her boyfriend. Then her co-worker walked into the pharmacy. This shocked the pharmacist, as she clearly remembered talking to her moments ago. That night, a loud bang surprised the pharmacist. She opened the door and found Ho Jun standing there with a distraught face. He was surprisingly all wet, as if it had been raining. Ho Jun sat on the couch and told the pharmacist that they had been caught. Ho Jun's wife had caught their affair. The pharmacist felt relieved and suggested that Ho Jun divorce his wife. It was something that was bound to happen, and both the pharmacist and her boyfriend knew it. When the pharmacist talked about starting a new life, Ho Jun was still worried and horrified. He begged the pharmacist to let him stay in her house for a few days and not share his whereabouts with anyone. That night, the pharmacist woke up to eerie music. She found her bathroom's light on, but there was a shadow of someone there. Worried they had an intruder, the pharmacist decided to check who it was. As she opened the door, she found the radio in the middle of the bathroom, but there was no one there. Next morning, the pharmacist left for work, but she was still worried about the incident from the previous night. When she reached the pharmacy, she got approached by two detectives who were looking for a criminal that ran away after ending his family. The pharmacist started to put things together and realized Ho Jun must have murdered his family after he was caught having an affair. She immediately returned to her house and found Ho Jun showering. He left his clothes on the floor. The pharmacist took out the garbage and threw away the soiled clothes. While trying to come up with a plan, the pharmacist kept talking to Ho Jun and started to pack their things. It was no longer safe for them to stay. However, no matter what the pharmacist said, Ho Jun only kept repeating one thing. He requested the pharmacist to not let anyone know he showered in the house. The police cars approached the house, and the doorbell rang. When the pharmacist opened the door, it was Ho Jun. Terrified, the pharmacist showed him the shadow which was still showering. Ho Jun went inside the kitchen, grabbed a hammer and approached the bathroom door. He then turned to the pharmacist, and with a blank face, asked her why she told someone else that he was showering in the house. Suddenly, the house turned red, and Ho Jun had a horrifying smirk on his face. Back in the present, Jai Wu spends the next few days looking for someone related to the building, and manages to find the real estate officer. The office is very strangely covered. Jai Wu enters the office and finds the officer. He asks what happened to him in that haunted building. The officer tells him that he lived in room 708 and was responsible for introducing the rooms. There had been many complaints from people who rented the place and were unsatisfied. That day, he had an appointment with the author 
and gave him a tour of apartment 504. He discovered that the sink was blocked. After the whole day of hard work, the officer returned home to his wife, who happened to be a doll. While eating his dinner, he gave the doll a bracelet. The head suddenly displaced, which annoyed the officer. That night, the officer woke up from sleep because his sink was also blocked and there was noise coming out of it. Trying to unblock the sink, he cut his finger. Strangely, he found a piece of his purse stuck in the hole. The next morning, a plumber came to check the sink. He pulled out a handful of black hairs. The plumber asked for a hefty fee for clearing the sink. This enraged the officer. He returned to his office and pulled out files to contact the old tenant of the room. They must have had females in the family who washed their hair in the sink, which clogged the pipes. The officer found the details of the woman who lived before him and quickly dialed the number. However, the voice from the other side of the phone was very eerie as if someone was drowning and choking. The officer returned home to check the sink. It was working fine. He later called the doll company to pick up the doll for repair work. By the time he hung up the call, the sink started to overflow. Trying to call the plumber, the officer looked for his phone on the bed and realized the doll was missing. Suddenly, a hand came out of the sink and turned off the water faucet. Still horrified, the officer returned to office for work, where he learned about the demise of a high school girl in his building. The co-worker at his office shared some interesting facts about the building. Turns out, the building was originally made for a church, which had a horrible history. He returned home and talked to his doll wife about the things he learned. Suddenly, the sink was making noise again. W. Hen he turned to his doll, he found her face looking at the sink as well. Suddenly, a bag was sticking out of the sink. When the officer went to take a closer look, the doll fell. The bag that was sticking up was the plastic-wrapped doll, and it was moving. He ran inside his bedroom and locked himself in the closet, but he couldn't run away from the figure and it was waiting for the officer in the closet as well. Back in the present, Jai Wu is surprised at the story. The officer is living in fear after what he experienced. He tells Jai Wu to find out about the church and the curse they left in the building. When the officer tries to beg Jai Wu to end the curse, Jai Wu is startled to see the palmless hands of the officer. Back in his studio, Jai Wu starts drawing his new webtoon. He shows his new work to his agent, who praises his drawing and storytelling immensely. However, the story is not long enough. Jai Wu packs his stuff and goes back to the building. Da Hai tries to stop him from overworking, but Jai Wu feels annoyed and leaves. He returns to the building and talks to the caretaker. Jai Wu offers money in exchange for the stories, but this makes the caretaker laugh. When Jai Wu promises to give whatever the caretaker needs, he starts telling another story. It is about an international student, Ti Hoon, who returned to Korea for a short while. He came to visit his childhood friend, as he had nowhere else to go. His friend, Yi Sok, lived in room 604. The two friends embraced each other as they met after a long time. Ti Hoon was surprised to see his friend in a miserable state. Yi Sok's face had rashes, and the house looked like no one cleaned it for years. The house was covered in black mold. Ti Hoon kept his thoughts to himself, as he needed a place to stay. Yi Sok brought out some dishes to eat, but Ti Hoon was shocked to his bones to see that all the dishes were rotten. When he looked at his friend, he was eating the food without any trouble. That night, Yi Sok asked Ti Hoon why he came over to his house while he had other friends. Ti Hoon talked about how he missed his childhood friend and wanted to meet him. To show his good regards, he promised to clean the place on Yi Sok's behalf. The next day, Yi Sok woke up early to clean the house. He felt bad that Ti Hoon had to bring up the topic of cleanliness. When Yi Sok left for work, Ti Hoon tried to fix himself something to eat. However, all the food in the fridge was rotten. Ti Hoon also noticed the mold was shaped like human shadows. He quickly went to the pharmacy and asked for a mold remover. He started to clean the place from top to bottom, except one room. When he was able to open the room, it was filled with more mold. There was a single photo in the middle of the wall. Ti Hoon got back to cleaning. Soon, Yi Sok returned from his study. However, he was horrified to see the mold-free house. He frantically screamed at Ti Hoon, asking him to bring his parents back. Ti Hoon felt very odd about the entire situation, and after thinking for some time, he decided to move out of the place to another friend's. As he was leaving, he started to see mold on the floor. When he opened the room with the family portrait, the mold was back and it was growing and spreading. Yi Sok apologized for being angry, but when he turned towards Ti Hoon, his face was distorted. Suddenly, a few hands came out of the portrait and held on to Ti Hoon as they didn't want him to leave. In the present day, Jai Wu asks the caretaker about the truth of the place. He wonders what might be causing such incidents. When he asks about the church people, the caretaker advises him to visit the one place that might hold the key to all his question. The caretaker hands him the keys to room 1504. Meanwhile, Da Hai is bored in the workshop, so she takes the recordings Jai Wu made and starts playing them one by one. However, in the tapes, it sounds like Jai Wu is talking with someone, but only his voice can be heard. Da Hai realizes Jai Wu is in trouble and hurries to the Buidling. Jai Wu decides to visit the room. He enters the elevator and finds a strange delivery man inside. He doesn't pay much attention, until suddenly, the man starts talking. Scared, Jai Wu gets off on the 10th floor. The elevator leaves with the delivery man looking at the ceiling. When Jai Wu looks around, he finds a similar looking man leaving a box in front of a door. He suddenly runs towards Jai Wu and tries to catch him. Jai Wu falls down while running, so he tries to hide in order to not get caught. 
The creepy delivery man finds him, but doesn't do anything and leaves. Jaiwu opens the door of room 1504. It is a strange looking room, with many incantations written around the walls. There is a closet and one of his tapes in the middle of the room. Jai Wu plays the tape, and it's the caretaker's voice. He admits to Jai Wu that he is not the caretaker of the place, and would now reveal the truth about the building. Back when the caretaker came to the building for he first time, he was a thief. He wanted to steal from the secret room, hoping it would get him the deal of a lifetime. He and his delivery man friend broke inside the room and discovered the strange writings on the wall. The delivery man found blood in the closet, and saw a handful of hair moving inside. Terrified, he told the caretaker. The caretaker dismissed it once again and moved to the room next door. There, they found a mummified body covered with clothes and incantations. When the caretaker moved the cloth covering the body, they found bells around the feet. The eyes of the mummified body were covered, and there was a key stuffed inside the mouth. The caretaker then opened the closet, and found nothing but absolute darkness inside. When he stuck his hand in the darkness, he found tons of money and started to fill his back. However, suddenly, the caretaker vanished. The delivery man was scared and tried to flee, but he couldn't leave without the money. He could hear the bells ring, and found the mummified body slowly walking towards him. He somehow escaped the building and ran to the car. However, the key was not with him. He could once again hear the bells ring, and found the caretaker knocking on the door. He quietly went in and sat beside the delivery man. When the delivery man was begging the caretaker for the keys, he realized that it was not the caretaker, but the mummified body. Jai Wu is holding the recorder and standing in front of the same closet. Suddenly, the closet door opens, and the mummified body pushes him inside. Trapped inside the closet, Jai Wu sees the caretaker bid him farewell. As the caretaker leaves, he shifts himself into Jai Wu, while the real Jai Wu screams in pain as the darkness engulfs him. Da Hai reaches the building and finds Jai Wu, but she knows something is awfully wrong about him. 